Hey there, it's Derek from Pacific Coast Auto here in Japan, and we're taking a look at a year 2002 BMW 330 CI M Sport. And so the 330 is the three liter inline six cylinder engine. One of the best engines of all time. Very, very nice, proper amount of power, good low end torque, great engine. CI is the Cabriolet version of it. Actually, CI is kind of weird because it is kind of the coupe designation and the cabriolet designation, but it is a cabriolet coupe or coupe. So I guess that does make sense. And then the M Sport means the sporty version. So you get different bumper, you get different uh, wheels, even though these are aftermarket wheels, you get different suspension and a bunch of trim pieces like steering wheel and uh, scuff plates on the doors. We'll say M Sport on them. I really, really like the look of the M Sport front end on these and the E46 is probably my favorite looking of all the three series. Okay, I'm gonna lower the hood here. Coolant and oil both look to be fine and running condition is good. I did take this one for a drive with the top down and it is amazing. It's a very good feeling, especially when the vehicle is in this good of condition. Okay, so this one was bought from auction and bought for export. It is not for sale. This is the post-purchase review of it. Okay, it's a 2002, 98093 kilometers. Very good condition for the mileage. It looks like it could be around 40 to 60,000 kilometers based on a pretty much perfect exterior and an interior that's very good as well. 3000 cc, auction grade four with an interior grade C. Here's the auction inspector notes and the salesperson or the uh, person who's selling the car their notes. So purchased from user, left hand drive, even though this is in Japan. And so that is the proper hand drive for German cars. So kind of cool that you can get those in Japan. Lots of them here. Uh, black leather interior, aftermarket wheels, keyless entry, HID headlights. And auction inspector notes, windshield rock chip, interior dirty and scratches, wheels scratch, steering wheel and seat wear, oil leak, audio, uh, part of the audio is missing, and underside scratch. Now, couldn't find the oil leak from up above and nothing is dripping down to the bottom. And so uh, when the auction inspects this, they go into kind of like a trench where you can see from the underside and you'll be able to see some of that stuff. Uh, generally speaking, when it says oil leak on here, it's not going to be enough to drip down. They're pretty picky about that because some of the ports are, are picky about that. Looking at the body here, we have a teeny tiny little dent, smallest grade dent there. Repainted section here. And then front bumper medium scratches on the front bumper but i'm going to show you those right now they are almost nothing and so if you look at the bumper like this you can't see any scratches like this you can't see any scratches and then you can when you get down to this but luckily in real life there are no 30 centimeter tall people and so you have paint cracks and a scratch underneath that and same thing on this side without the paint crack and so that's really on the entire exterior the worst part Everything else almost looks factory, and for a car that's 15 years old, that's pretty amazing. So I'm going to show you the front end, especially the headlights again, because these are my favorite of all the headlights in the E46. And I think there are three different versions of headlights, but these ones come with just like the uh, M3, the really nice looking uh, lens in there. I don't really know how else to say it. And I do believe that this one, the inside lenses are slightly different for uh, the different markets. Cause I don't think that these are the same as the North American ones, but could be wrong about that. Fog lights down there. Okay. Let's do the once around and it's a four seater cabriolet. And so that soft top is rather big, a nice steep rake to the windshield as well. And so when you drive the car around with the top open, it feels extraordinarily special. And maybe it's just me having uh, driven this for the very first time I've ever driven an open top car was this one here. And I know that does sound a little bit crazy, but I don't drive a lot of the cars that we export. JDM tree here. And uh, this one I had to, so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna test the open top because it's nice to test that anyway. Okay, wheels look like AC Schnitzer wheels, but I believe that they're knockoff wheels. Um, a bit unfortunate, but they're a very good looking wheel nonetheless. And the suspension is rather low on this car. You can see, especially the back is pretty low there. And uh, 
I typically don't like a BMW that is this low. I would like it a little bit higher. Let's have a look at the suspension in here. And they are lowering springs by the look of it, not adjustable. Okay, so the soft top is in strangely good condition. This is unusual for a car that's this old, so most likely it has been parked inside. Unlike the Z3, you get a proper hard glass rear window, so that's not going to fog up. Gives you good visibility, which is really important because the cabriolets have a really large section here for the C-pillar area, and so that uh, minimizes your visibility. If you also have a cloudy back window, that makes it worse. M Sports exhaust is a little bit louder than normal. Tires on the back are 2000 and I think 2004, but the front ones are 2017. Let me just uh, see. No, 2012 on the back, almost out of tread. And the front ones are almost brand new, 2017. Okay, do like this badge on the back. 330 means you mean business. And uh, good looking taillights. Okay, so let's go to the interior. Left hand drive car, and so I'm getting on on the wrong side for a car in Japan. These little fins at the top reduce wind noise when you're driving highway speeds. And it actually works. Okay, so interior, we're a little bit weaker in the interior than we were in the exterior, but all in all, not that bad for a 100,000 kilometer car. We have some scratches here. And we have some areas where the seat belt got clamped in the door here. I believe these seats are exclusive to the M Sport package. Just open this door a little bit wider so that you can see. And so they're fairly highly bolstered full power except for this section here is manually manually done and then you can hide thin long things in here that are pencil shaped and then just go like that and then nobody can find them and so very cool on that average amount of wear here so it looks like it needs to be uh, dyed back to black and sealed up some scratches here I guess from people scratching their neck I don't know reaching for a seatbelt maybe don't know M Sport steering wheel. It's really good feeling steering wheel. I think the perfect <laughs> um, uh, girth. I don't know if that's the right word. 98, 130 kilometers. Good looking gauges. M Sport dead pedal. That's cool. AC works nice and strong. Here's the audio piece that was missing. It's been converted. Usually there is a little bit bigger than a single DIN uh, stereo unit here. It says BMW business on it for whatever reason. Uh, but this one's been converted to something that can hold a single DIN. It doesn't look like it's a very good kit though, because you can see alignment isn't isn't perfect for that. I turned the AC off actually. Do, 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 do. Okay, shifting is good. You can also shift yourself. So go like this. You can see plus and minus are a flick. Oh, I didn't notice that before, but this does come up. Okay, that piece may have clips that are broken. And um, that needs to be opened anyway because this one is a button that rolls down all your windows at the same time, but you can see it's kind of floppy and doesn't do anything. Floppy and doesn't do anything, it's like my cat. But that's not true. My cat loves to poo poo on and pee pee in my house in places that it's not supposed to. It is an ongoing problem. Okay, the engine is so smooth and so nice. Not being gentle there, but uh, very, very good responsive, good low end torque. I already mentioned that, just want to say it again. But uh, I do like the 3.2 liter VR6 engine better, which doesn't come in this car. <laughs> and I only say that because I was reading reviews on the, uh, the Golf R32, and a lot of people compare it uh, price wise to the 330. So. I'm a little bit biased in that regard. Close the door. This is gonna be the end of the video here. Great condition car, really good to see good cars when they come through, makes me super happy. So hope you enjoyed the video here. If you have any questions, feel free to ask away. You can check out our website. There's a link to that in the description of the video. So thanks a lot and have a nice day.